welcome to the Lighter Side Show. Here you are with us. We've had such a great time already before the cameras were even rolling. I think we finally have ourselves together. We have actually no fun here. It's a no laughter zone. Colleen has gotten up twice to wipe her eyes from crying so hard, and we can't even tell you why we were <laughs> laughing so hard. No, like not like we can't. Actually, we just really, I know why I was laughing so hard. <laughs> All right, so we do like to bring a little joy to the stud, and if you put your fingers to the keyboard, maybe Colleen will respond and tell you why she was laughing so hard, but for now, we'll leave that as a mystery. Today, we're going to be talking to Maitland and finding out the history of Maitland. Looking forward to it. Who is she? Okay. <laughs> They're going to continue laughing. I'm going to check out and let Maitland come in. I'm already sweating. I'm wiping it from my face. My hands are sweating. I was thinking about when I met Maitland um, for the first time. I don't know if we've talked about this. Have we? I don't know. I think Maitland's spoken about it a little bit. Yeah, I think you've talked about it a little bit. I mean, I think I've heard the story. I don't know that we've shared it on the show. Maybe. I don't know. Well, let's take a moment and yeah. I calm myself, get myself to stop sweating. How Jamie met Maitland. Yes, yeah. I met Maitland through my teacher, Marguerite Romes in Gainesville, Florida, and Marguerite was probably in her early 60s, a wonderful Catholic woman, and um, she was channeling Maitland, and this very proper woman would just turn into a kid. <laughs> I mean, her fingers would just wiggle and move, she had a hip plate, and Maitland would just fold up this woman's legs, which with the hip plate, she couldn't do tailor position, which was this, because it wouldn't rotate that way. So we had to take pictures of our teacher to show her that's what was happening. She went and got her x-rays, and she was like, see, my leg doesn't move like that. And we're like, with Maitland, it does. So that was a, like a weird thing. And also to see somebody that you just know to be mm, very so, stoic yes, yeah. and well put together, <laughs> Seeing how much is that doggy in the window <laughs> for like 15 minutes. <laughs> I was just like, okay. And then my teacher, Marguerite, was like, you can do this. You're going to sit next to me. You're going to learn how to channel. I was like, I'm not interested. <laughs> I don't want to do that. That's scary. And Maitland was the first to work with me and to show up through me. And it was a, a great relationship. How long had Maitland been working with Marguerite? Oh, my God. At that time? Like for years. 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 Is Marguerite still alive? I do not know the answer to that. Okay. And I regret not knowing the answer to mm -hmm. that. We have not stayed curious. in touch. I have not stayed in touch. I would be more accurate to that. I've been a busy person, not an excuse. Let that be a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> if you're out there and you need to get in touch with somebody, just do it. Um, so I know that Maitland was with her for a really long time, and then I was probably 21 when that was happening. So that was 23 years ago that I met Maitland and been working with Maitland. And I know Maitland works with so many other people. Mm. I have a student out in Tokyo who she loves and works through quite easily. Sure, and we hear from the Lumineers a lot that yes. she's working with them. Right, you know, Very, Very clearly. <laughs> yeah, Rob, John. John, big time. Mary. You guys channeling her, oh my God. That sounds like the name of a band, Rob, John, and Mary. Well, Mary, John, and Rob. Rob, John, and Mary. I'd like to see that band. You would? Yeah. <laughs> get, get working on that, you all. <laughs> I'll channel Maitland at the same time, and she'll sing. Can you imagine? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. See, here's some fun we can have in yeah. spirit. Cause... We'll have to do that the next, like, advanced weekend. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're trying advanced weekend 2018 to be out of the country. Yeah, it's time to spread some wings and have some fun. Okay, I'm settled. You can continue chatting. I'm checking. I'm good. I'm going to just wait on you. Oh, gosh. I never keep talking during this time. <laughs> Why not? I don't know what to say. <laughs> and the birds come out. <laughs> I get that creepy feeling. My chest gets real heavy like I'm going to go to sleep. Oh.
they're so happy. I know. I was just thinking, like, it's so nice to have the birds in the background. I wonder if it's going to come up. Jesse, will that come up on camera or not? Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Or on video, rather. I'm on Snow White. Oh. Thank did you. you bring them with you? <laughs> no. They were here. I can't be responsible for it. Not me this time. I'm not used to hearing them. I'm used to hearing the train and Jesse might hear them more, but we, we really sound like we have birds like right in the corner of the building right there. There's a bird in Tree Sweet. Well, thank you for joining us today. We haven't seen you in a little bit. It hasn't been that long. Well, I'm oh, over no. at the center a lot. I do the channelings every month. When's the last time you've been on the show, though? I don't know. I don't but know the either. last channeling we had, I brought Archangel Michael. You did. He was the one who trained that was me. Pretty when amazing. I, <laughs> do you like him? It was. It was. It was a pretty amazing channeling for sure. We can work with him a lot more. It's. I. We're on a show. I'll <laughs> talk about it later. <laughs> what is it? What is it? <laughs> I was gonna say. It would be nice if Jamie did more channeling. Hmm. Is that are you saying that? If we had Jay, more are you gonna make promises time, for Jamie? <laughs> well, we're working with her on what this is gonna look like. But okay. um, if we had more shared time in channeling that we could get more voices um, through her instrument. Sure, sure. And then create a very good solid team. So with Grace and myself and Archangel Michael, and Marshall. Yeah, that's what I thought you were going to say, but I wanted you to say it. Uh, yeah. He's been working with us a lot for the last, like, three of your weeks, and Jamie's still... Mm -hmm. Well, Jamie was very nervous about channeling Marshall, you know, in the episodes before, but afterwards she seemed fine. And I understand her nervousness. I mean, she is channeling him for the first time, in front of the camera and exposing herself in that way. And that's, you know, that, that was the first time channeling him. Yes. And first time in front of the camera. Yes. It's a lot. And we really like Sai to come in and do more work. And, um, and then there's one other. Jolly. No. Oh. Jolly likes to come, but she doesn't want to do all the work. Okay. Who's the other one? A secret. Is it someone we know? Some of you. But not all of you. Mm -hmm. but some of you. Because then we can have a well diverse from angel to alien to counselor to incarnated to, you know, therapy, communications, energy, mm -hmm. which... Um, Marshall's more of the emotional communicator, and emotions is what creates the human life force. You're emotional beings, you're not human beings. And then we're going to fill in the hole with the other one. But it's a surprise. Um, it's a... Does Jamie know? It's a heady. Mm -mm. She doesn't. Mm -mm. We have to get her to agree first to do this. She's, we can't do anything that she doesn't want to do. Absolutely. And so we've been presenting her the information, and um, and we're going, we'll see. Okay. See, so now all of you know, too. It's not a big now secret. Now we know before Jamie does. <laughs> <laughs> well, she knows that. She'll know by the time know. this, yeah. She knows what you know right now. She just doesn't know the, the mystery person. Oh, she does. Do you. So she knows that there's a mystery person coming. I, I, I see what you're saying. So today we're here to talk about you. It's about me. Yay! So milk and cookies and meat <laughs> one. So my favorite cookie is an oatmeal <laughs> chocolate walnut. Oatmeal chocolate walnut. Yes, we've talked about this, and I said I was going to make some cookies for you, and I never did. Never did. <laughs> never did. Never did that. I will soon. Okay. Or ja or Jamie can. She's been really into baking lately, so maybe she can make some cookies. Uh, so, the theme this season is history. So we've been trying to, you know, it's not the main theme of every episode, but we've been trying to incorporate that in each of the episodes. And so today's episode title is the history of Maitland, because we have several Lumineers who want to know more about you. Not the only... The history of me. Yeah. 
if you, you know, what do you want to share? Do you want to share different lifetimes? Do you want to share um, more about your life when you were incarnated as Maitland? It was so short. I know, it was really short. So, and I know that at the Advanced Mediumship Weekend, one of our students had said that he asked you about another lifetime, and he had shared some of that. Um, so, what would you like to talk about? Well, it's just like all of your souls, Lumineers and Colleen's and Jesse's, is that <laughs> it is living other incarnations mm-hmm. right now as well. You won't find a life out there in existence that is not tethered to another life because there's no such thing as being separate Mm -hmm. or on your own. If you have a bigger viewpoint, you'll see that everybody's incarnation and choice is actually attached to the whole. Mm -hmm. Like we're all drops of water in the ocean And we can look at them in an individual standpoint and what's inside um, of the drop of water. What is it carrying? What nutritional value? What chemicals? Everything like that. Elements. Then we could step back and say, well, this group of water makes this bay or this ocean or it just makes the entire water. Same with souls. Same with the life that's inside of you. So... I have other lives going on and living, and um, the one where I'm Maitland, I like to associate the most to because it's the one that made the most impact on me in who I choose to be because my, my parents at that time, which was in the late 1920s in Chicago, were um, not like other parents at that time. They were very happy to be in the States. They were very happy to have jobs, and they were very happy to have each other. And it wasn't easy to have a family. And so when I came along, they had tried a, a long time. And so the way that they parented me was with a lot of love and freedom of speech which um, all of my friends, they weren't treated that way at that time. If you remember being a kid in the late 20s, it was very difficult (laughs) because there was a very big um, depression where there was no money and it was very difficult to survive. So you relied on... Um, getting support from your community and from other families and you relied on everybody else's abilities and talents Mm -hmm. and we would share. And Maylin, were you an only child? I had a a baby brother. You did? Mm -hmm. He is much younger than me. He was maybe four and a half or five years younger than me. I was already a young adult. Mm -hmm. And my mom had him because she doesn't make babies easily. And so um, um, so I was much uh, older than him, and my parents would let me um, speak my opinion. And my dad always told me, even though I was a girl, that I needed to know everything. And he would challenge me, and he would ask me questions like, You know, how do you think that table was put together? And I would have to figure out how the craftsmen put the table together. I remember laying underneath our wooden table. When I was younger, it wasn't painted. And then my mother had it painted yellow. And it had all wooden legs. And it was very, the legs were very delicate because they would have the wood balls and then it would have a long part of wood, and then it would have these lines in the wood, on the legs. And um, it was fun to draw and run your fingers over. And so my dad always challenged me to know how things were done, even though I wasn't old enough to do them. So I was very comfortable around adults and talking to them, where 
kids my age were supposed to be quiet and um, not really be seen at gatherings or, or heard. But um, when I would speak up and ask the questions that my father would ask me to other adults, I liked hearing them be surprised that I was asking. I liked having the innocence, but the knowledge. And I saw that it really was making a difference with what adults were thinking and doing and treating. And I remember that the most because I had some sense of equality even though I was little. So when we had the car wreck and my mom and my baby brother and I, we went together, we died together. I didn't want to change. I didn't want to grow up and I didn't want I didn't, I didn't want to focus on my other incarnations. I wanted me to stay where I was, and I wanted me to, to help the other people remember who they are and to remember where they came from. And so that's because my dad didn't treat me like a kid. And, and I think that when people come to Earth, they start treating themselves like human beings and they stop treating themselves like spirit beings and emotional beings. And so I want to be that person, <clears throat> that entity, me, to come in and help people remember the, the spirit part of you and the fun part of you and to remember where you came from and the possibilities. And then my love for animals, that's just me. I love them. All kinds of them. Did you have animals? Mm -mm. No, you can't remember any, any of the lifetimes that where you had animals. Oh, other lifetimes? Yeah. Yes. I had a lifetime where I was a boy in Africa, and we were in a tribe where the desert met the trees. And I knew from the... In English, it would be the grandfather healer. Mm -hmm. He was the healer because he could talk to the trees. And the trees would tell you where the animals were. And so I learned from grandfather healer how to talk to the trees so I could find the animals. That was my first time loving animals. So that would have... Snakes were very important. That would have been more like wild animals rather than pets, correct? Or animal companions. Or did you see them as azure animal companions? They were my friends. Okay. But I understand when you mean when they were wild. They didn't mm -hmm. have a human overseeing mm -hmm. them. But the information that is inside of other um beings other life force whether it is the worm 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 how do you say it worm worm you're talking about like an earthworm uh -huh. yeah the earthworm <laughs> and um worm. whether it's say it again worm worm <laughs> earthworm W -O -R -M. Jesse is like, Jesse's like just crossing his eyes. <laughs> you say it. Say it, Jesse. Worm. Oh, worm. But it's you not just saying it, man. Right? No, that's warm. warm. That's warm. when like something is between hot and cold. Warm. It's warm. It what, doesn't what about sound warm right worms? In this mouth? <laughs> warm worms. Warm worm. <laughs> this right out. <laughs> He's going to edit it out. Yes. <clears throat> worm worms. Whether it is the earth worm mm -hmm. or a human being. And there's so many lives in between. Even plant lives and tree lives. Everything that has a life force energy has knowledge and experience. Not only does it have the knowledge and experience of that incarnation they're living, it has passive memory of all the incarnations that it has chosen to be a part of. And I think that's so fascinating.
fascinating. So when I become friends with animals, I'm not only learning about their purpose and their destiny and the life that they're in, I'm learning about their other lives and their experiences. So it's you you can find a teacher in everything that has life force. My other lives were mostly based on that, but in my human incarnations, I would say my life as Maitland was the most impactful, even though it was one of the shortest. Because when I got here, I knew I didn't want to grow up. And I know some Lumineers, you see me as six. I was six when I passed. I like being nine. Some of you see me as eight. The numbers don't matter as long as I don't ever grow up. <laughs> Do you, can you think about a, a lifetime that might have influenced your lifetime as Maitland? Like why you chose to come back or to be Maitland? Does that make sense? Yes. But I understand what you're asking. Mm -hmm. But and you're thinking about it in a linear way. I know. Frame. I know. But, you know, the thing about it, and I wanted to say this before, history is a linear time frame thinking. So if you're thinking about history, or correct me if I'm wrong, what is your definition of history? Because when I think of history... I definitely think about it in a linear way, and I'm sure Jesse probably does as well, mm -hmm. and most people do. I mean, I definitely understand the fact that we're all living all these lifetimes at the same time. I know that. But when we're talking about the word history... I think history is just the stuff that you can remember. Okay. It's... His story. Mm -hmm. It's your story. It's just the stuff that you can remember. But then when we actually look at time and time frames, it's not linear. So history doesn't have to be linear. Mm -hmm. It's just the stuff that you can remember. The stuff, the stories that were passed down. I'm curious how your memory is different than mine. Because I have memory of all my incarnations mm -hmm. present in my head. So you keep all those memories. So you mm -hmm. remember everything. Mm -hmm. Of me. So your and history me. is everything. <laughs> Does that... And, and me is all the incarnations I've chosen. From plants to animals to people to other life beings. When I transition out of this body, am I going to have all of those memories? If you'd like to, some people you don't want to. You can choose not to. to. Okay. It's too much. Yeah. But when I wanted to make my presence known as Maitland and take a role in helping people on Earth, I was put with Archangel Michael to study mm -hmm. and, and paired with him because in... In my dream as a kid, I was taught there was angels mm -hmm. and that angels had wings and that angels were good beings and they helped people. So I would wanted to inspire to be an angel. And also would be into shape. Yes. Right? He he's, <laughs> can be very mean, but he's very funny. Is the word really, is it mean or is he just tough? He's tough. Yeah. He's very tough. And he's especially tough about knowing what is a battle and what is not, what is conflict mm -hmm. and what is not. Because when you come out of a human life, a lot of what you've been experiencing time and time again is conflict. You know, mm -hmm. I have a choice and there is a conflict here and I must choose this one or that one. And, and it's sometimes hard to zip out of it, to get away from it. Mm. And when I was going to help people, I was telling them what I could see rather than helping them see it. And so that was why he was being very tough. Mm. And so I wanted to help other people, and he's the one who taught me how to help without interfering with allowing the, the, the person, the life force I'm helping, gain the, the strength and the empowerment to make their decisions, not me do it for mm -hmm. them. And 
angels don't have wings and they don't have feathers and they don't fly like people with wings. Where do you think that imagery came from? Somebody who wrote a story about it in the Bible. But do they appear that way to people? So people know that they're angels? Nope. Yes, Maitland. When you see them, they're very tall beings mm -hmm. and they have this energy that shines from them. And so you know how sometimes when you look at the sun and you see all these psh, 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 sparks and rays mm -hmm. and things? It's the same thing as that. So if the energy is shining off their back, I think it would only be logical if you go to describe that it's like a hybrid human and it has bird wings and they fly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, doves were a big symbol of religion and God and birds were very sacred and... And so I think just the imagination led it to be so when they were looking at a being that had energy moving around them, that they described it as something that would be familiar to them. But it's not. <laughs> That's okay, though. What were we talking about? <laughs> what were we talking about? See? I don't, think, I don't think we were talking about anything that we got away from. No, um, I'm kind of curious. I want to go back to uh, Maitland, the Incarnation. Um, Maitland, the Incarnation. Dun, dun, dun. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, I, I think well, what, what I'm hearing is it's safe to say that you lead with Maitland. Mm -hmm. you, you possess all of your incarnations, but you lead with Maitland. Mm -hmm. And so... And, and you said that Maitland had the most impact on just why why have you chosen to leave with Maitland? Because Maitland, my life, my short life with Maitland led me to, it was like the, what did you say, the last? It was your last incarnation. It was. Right? Yes. Well, you're thinking time is yes, there, but yes. yeah. <clears throat> the last, um, Choice, Leno, the last straw mm. on some camel. It's something like that. I can't remember it right now. Last straw on the camel? Was it, 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 was, it was the straw that broke the camel's back. The straw that broke the camel's back. Poor camel. But I decided that I didn't want to focus on my other incarnations. I wanted to focus on being the spirit being. I wanted a, a bigger purpose in my, my life as a spirit. You know, I'm thinking, and I know that a lot of our viewers are much more familiar than I am with all the different Chandlers out there, um, but I cannot think of another Chandler who channels a child or a spirit who presents themselves as a child. I know they've got to exist. I'm saying I just don't know. I so you're very so. unique to me that way. Thank you. And very relatable. Thank you. I want to be relatable. That's why I want to be young. I want to say, like when I was alive, I could say the biggest things that my dad would teach me. And the adults, they wouldn't walk away from me. They would be so stunned that I was bringing it up. And they would, in return, find answers inside of themselves that they didn't know they had. And I really liked it. And I liked being an equal, but also being able to leave and and go play jump rope mm -hmm. and go color. There's there's a big, beautiful balance in being young because the people that I knew in Maitland, when they got older, they started to define themselves by what they did and what they had, not who they are. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to do that. When my dad would ask me who I was going to be when I grew up, I would said, I'm going to be Maitland. And I am. <laughs> I wasn't going to be a doctor or a nurse or a teacher or all your other careers you have, baker, a wife, a mother. I was going to be me. So... That's why I lead with Maitland, 
from my afterlife, from my beyond place, because I get to be me. And I think you give permission to adults out there to, to be playful and to explore that side of themselves as well. I hope so, because then I can also talk about all the big things that I know about because I have had all those experiences and, and I do know what it's like being a human, even an adult human and an adult human in a relationship. I know what it's like being a boy and a man and a girl and a woman and a mother. And so I can draw on all of the incarnation histories. Because you've had experience with all of them. Yes. And so I use that to my benefit when I'm helping people find their truths. Life is really, really beautiful. Even though you, as humans, like to look at the bad stuff a lot, which is really weird. <laughs> it's really beautiful. But you'll actually slow down your life and stop to worry to grieve, to be a victim, to feel bad, to stare at the accident, to like listen to the bad news and feel overwhelmed and overcome. Like you make so much time in your life to do that. I wonder what your life would be like if you paused to see the beautiful things, <laughs> to see the healthy people, to listen to laughter, to watch a bird, to go color, to go for a walk, to recognize how healthy and, and active you are. Like, your glasses, your, that's the metaphorical. Mm -hmm. Your metaphorical glasses that you wear, it would all be positive. That's what I like to do. I shoo you away from staying stagnant and in lower vibrations that don't serve you well. The sun is out. <laughs> I can see it. Maylin, do any of your other incarnations act as guides, or is it just you? I have other incarnations that guide friends and family from that incarnation. Okay. I am an old woman in Turkey and I'm big. And I have lots of grandchildren. I have lots of children and they're all living in that incarnation. And me as the grandmother I make myself known and I take care of my family. But, and a lot of my incarnations, I don't do that because I have a lot of incarnations that are animals and I have some that are plants and I have some that are um, in multi dimensional planes that don't align with Earth. And so, I don't have the ability in those to be a guide to somebody else. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So my existence in my energy and my soul, my Maitland identity is the only one I am using to help all kinds of people. All kinds of people that are that I don't know, that aren't my friend. All kinds of people that are um, asking for help, um, and all kinds of animals. Do you find that most of the people that you are helping or guiding, <clears throat> excuse me, are aware that you're helping and guiding them? Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, like I know that there's a lot of viewers who you help. Um, and I know, you know, that you came through Marguerite and you've probably come through other Chandlers as well and Jamie, but are there people that you're silently helping as well? Hi, Tamoy. Hi, Yuki. 
Hi Mary. Hi Josie. Hi Rob. Hi John. Hi Eric. I hope a lot of people, most of them know that I'm helping them because um, they were curious of why things were happening. Then um, some people don't know that I'm helping them. Like, um, I'm going to give an example. My friend, Sandra. That's her proper name. Mm -hmm. She doesn't go by that one. I work with her. She tells me to help her kids and her mother. Mm -hmm. But her kids and her mother don't know me, but I help them. Yes, so that would still be that you're known. To her. To her. Yes. Same with Nancy. My friend Nancy does that too. Mm -hmm. Go help this person, and I'll, I will help because I can. That's all. Thank you. The history of Maitland. <laughs> Thank you for letting me be here, Lumineers. Bye. Bye. I like the gymnastics ending. <laughs> Why is that gymnastics? Because, you know, in gymnastics, when they, <laughs> la they land whatever they're doing, at, then they do this. Do they?